can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. She is blessed and praised. God bless you guys. Welcome back to Twist and Shout. Of course, I am Shar, And I would just like to say that, Lord, I truly thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this opportunity because I feel like this is going to hit home for someone. And I, I want nothing more but to do the will of God. And I'm so... <laughs> I'm so in the spirit right now, y'all. I don't. I hope I don't cry, cause Lord have mercy. Then I'm the type that cries and can't hardly talk. So, <laughs> Lord be with me and strengthen me. Listen, I need you to go over to Galatians chapter five, and this is a very familiar passage. I used to hear all the time in Sunday school as a kid in children's church. You don't really hear it no more, but I pray that God's word that never changes, just has a new, fresh anointing on it, as you guys hear it on this morning. So I'm just going to go ahead right into this because I feel like this may get a little lengthy and y'all know I try to keep my stuff 15 minutes and under. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for waking us up. We thank you for putting us in our right minds, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your name and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Lord, we ask that you open up our eyes, that you renew our mind and our hearts and any unclean thing that's in us, Lord, we ask that you remove it. Lord, we ask that your will be done over our lives in Jesus name. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and read into this. Um, chapter five, Galatians verse 13 says, you, my brothers and sisters were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Verse 16. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, um, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, decision, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this would not inherit the kingdom of God. So, let's talk about it. We say, don't judge me. When we have a judgment right here in the world of God, and I'm just going to zoom in right quick, because I don't mind my personal notes. Make sure you guys can actually read it. There you go. And this is the New International Version, of course. But um, let's talk about it. This is something that bothers me so much naturally that I, I God had to show me me in the process of me trying to teach and speak on this. Because when we go down further, it says, uh, verse 22, but the, excuse me, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Let's go back to what we read early. But if it is verse 18, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Listen to me. We all should know by now, and I don't say that like that someone's ignorant because people come to Christ every day and they have to learn. But if you've been on this road long enough, you know that Jesus is grace. He is saving grace so that we are no longer under the law. He was the completion of the law. He was the ultimate sacrifice. 
And it's something that even I heard people saying is like, oh, well, now, okay, okay, okay. I, we know Jesus came, he died, and he rose. But no, listen to me. Back in the Old Testament days, they had to cleanse their sins with sacrifice. Lamb, sheep, goat, doves, whatever they had. But now that Jesus has shed his blood on a cross... For all who shall believe in him to have everlasting life, he was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the true blood shed sacrifice. So because of what he did, there he has fulfilled the law and we are now under grace. So does that mean you throw away the Old Testament? No. Does that mean you throw away the Ten Commandments? No. He fulfilled the law. So, yes, it is good that we had these principles and we are to apply them to our life. But now that he has came and gone and is soon to return, he left with us the Holy Spirit to give us discernment in our spirits and not within ourselves to help us make decisions against these things that we just read in the Bible. So, again, when you see racism, colorism sexism um all the adultery killing murder all those things sex trafficking when you see these things and you hear these things please understand because first the fall of man and sin disobedience disobedience brings consequences and this is something we don't want to hear because we want to hear or we want to jot down to the fruits of the spirit but before he went into the fruits of the spirit he saw fit to say, hey, these are things that are not of the spirit, but of the flesh. So these things are going to happen. They're going to take place. And you have to be careful not to fall trick into these things because obviously these are some heavy hitters. Let's look at um, one of the biggest ones that has God like, yeah, I'm jealous. You know that. Let's look at idolatry and witchcraft. This is something that a post been going on about sage. And a lot of people say, well, it's nothing wrong with sage. And then they try to use the example of the wise men brought Jesus, um, myrrh and frankincense. But please understand, because sage can be an essential oil too. And sage is in hair products and cosmetic products because they have beneficial factors to your hair and skin. Not because we worship them and not because we say that they give us good energy. If you do that as a Christian, you are wrong. Nothing should be, because I even, and God even showed me this morning, and let me tell you how good God is, because I looked at that post and obviously I used my rightful judgment and I shared it and I educated people. I didn't, one thing I also do too is I take the post and I take the original a post and share. I don't share one particular person because people would think you being funny and I don't want that. So I shared, shared the original post and I said, let's be clear here. Anything that you claim will give you peace, joy, and happiness, these fruits of the spirit that the Bible clearly says are of the spirit, you are going against God and you are being disrespectful. He doesn't need sage. He doesn't need a tea tree and olive oil. He doesn't need these things to do what he does. You have to acknowledge God for who he is, all powerful, all knowing, all present God. He doesn't need any of those things. And when you demean him and when you belittle him and say, I need this sage in the name of Jesus to get rid of evil spirits and bad energy, you are alive from the pits of hell. It's so unnecessary. That, my friend, is witchcraft. Or the modern term, because, uh, you know, you don't hear too many people mention witchcraft. It still exists. But we like to say antichrist, which means anything that goes against Christ. My friend, if you're burning sage, that is not godly, that is not biblical. Because the original root of the purpose of which burning sage is, because you can sit here all day long and say, well, I didn't mean no harm. I didn't mean no disrespect. Just like... um. I grew up in a home where my mom did a lot of home interior and stuff like that. So it was a lot of angel pictures, a lot of God pictures and all these things. But as time went on, there was a shift because someone came and actually preached the truth, which is you don't need a picture. You don't need a um, statue. You don't need a figurine to prove how much you love God. 
Those things do not represent Christ. So I'm just saying this to say that we have to be careful about even the smallest things. Because again, this morning I was dealing, I, I did that last night. That was on my mind last night. I was talking to my husband and I got up to get my coffee and I said, oh, I just need my coffee to, to calm down, to relax. And it said, uh-uh, uh-uh, no, you do not need tea, coffee to calm you. Because when you go into therapeutic and um, yoga and all this stuff, these things are the new age Christianity that saying that material things can cope and aid in your Christian walk. And that is a bald faced lie. We have to be careful about what we say. And like I said, I had to repent. I'm like, Lord, I'm so sorry. Because y'all know I get up here and say, I got it. You get your coffee. Now, don't get it wrong because I have my series Bible and tea. That doesn't mean that whenever I read the Bible, I have to have this cup of tea because um, the last video I recorded, I didn't even get tea that morning. And I got some this morning, as you can see, but I barely finished it. And listen, God had to say, uh-uh, be careful what comes out your mouth because you become dependent on these things. And then it's like unnecessary to, and, uh, to cope with the word of God. And you don't need anything but God. Because when you read to God, the Holy Spirit will talk to you through the word of God. So such things, idolatry and stuff, like the material, the figurines and stuff, the, the symbols of the cross and stuff, do not be deceived and do not be indulged in those things. Like everything in moderation. Um, hatred. Oh boy, we don't want to hear about this. But listen, if you scream Black Lives Matter, you are actively participating in hatred. Let me tell you why. God made all of us. And this is one thing too, because I even had to repent for my video about saying, you know what, go out and march and da 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 for George uh, Floyd and everybody else. But God had to deal with me and say, wait a minute. Because if you scream that name, you make sure you have the same energy screening somebody named who is white. And guess what? We don't and we didn't. So we had to repent and say, Lord, please forgive me because that is not Christ like he died for all of us. The white, the mitts, the Puerto Rican, the Asians, the Haitians, the Jamaicans, everybody. He died for all of us. And if we can't scream that somebody lives matters for this person, we shouldn't be particularly singing out this person. Justice is justice. And guess what? Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. So in all of that, we have to be careful. Um, discord. Jealousy. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Fits of rage. That's something that we all have to work on because think about what is contributing to our rage. Is it a bad relationship? Is it uh, this thing with the Black Lives Matter? Is it politics? Is there anything that rage or raises your momentum to just rage, like just, oh, I got to say it and I got to get it out. Repent now. Selfish ambition, which is simply whatever you're desiring. To, like, say, for example, when I'm speaking this word, I, I make it clear that because y'all know you two pay us. Everybody should know that. But listen, that money, that little chat gives me gas money and might get uh i don't know a pair of shoes or something it's not that deep but now going forward i have something to actually invest my money into which will be our church so think about it that way when you like share click subscribe comment think about you investing into the word of god into the ministry not me because that's where it's going to go for now but um you want to be careful what you like if i came up here to just uh, catch the next best thing about what's going on in the world and just say, okay, God, I'm going to bring this forth like, like you gave it to me. No, when I come forth with this word of God, best believe I sit here and I pray and I, I meditate on the word and God said, go. That's what it is. Not for financial gain, not for likes, not for shares, but as a result of the likes and shares, the ministry go. So let's not get it twisted. I'm not saying those things are bad because when you grow something, the word gets out to more people, but we have to be careful. Even with the natural hair content and all these things, you want to be careful about how much you invest into something, whether it be person or material decision, which is quarreling and disagreements leading to separations or division. Now there's a lot going on with the Catholic church. 
um, churches over in California. There's a lot of things going on with churches and beliefs and opinions about opening church, closing doors, politics. Let the main thing be the main thing and then peacefully figure out the rest. But what you have is you have Baptists against the Pentecostals. What is that really? Because from what I've seen as of lately, you can't tell the difference besides order, which me and my husband is a big fan of order. Like we do not believe in people walking around and talking and raising up, going to the bathroom while the person is speaking. I feel like it's very disrespectful and very distracting. Now, do I say you have to uh, go to the tree and kumbaya because your ancestors did it? Because that's one of the things that's a complaint about the Baptists is they're stuck in tradition. I say, if it ain't hurting nobody, okay, do that. But don't make it seem like everybody should do that or everybody should not do that. Like I said, if it ain't putting nobody in heaven or hell, just relax on it. Um, Envy, drunkenness, orgy, and the like. My, 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 my. Envy is a horrible thing. Let me tell y'all something. I have experienced the most envy for no reason. Well, I'm sure they made up a reason in their mind. But listen, it could be something as simple as having hair on your head, being a dark complexion, having even skin tone, having a certain shape, um, how you look in a certain dress. Man, envy can come so quick and so fast from a number of things and have people looking at you funny and not talking to you. And you're like, what did I do to you? But you have to take it with God because naturally my myself would be like, man, what did I do? What's your problem? But we have to remember to put it in the Lord's hand and not try to take on those problems ourselves. But I just had to come in here and share this with you that the Holy Spirit showed me. Y'all listen, we, we quit to say that we, we need to display love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But listen, let's zoom down to self-control. How often do you hear about that? Hmm? And think about all the addictions and, and all the things that have some come, some Christianities or some Christians in this world. Like uh, one of the biggest things is molestation, like uh, men ministers messing with boy ministers, um, men cheating on their wives and um, people having sex in the church, uh, deacons sleeping with such and such and musicians. And think about all those things that take place. Um, in the church and around Christian people, people being addicted to sex, uh, addicted to porn, addicted to drinking, smoking, um, all these nasty, filthy things that is not of God. Think about all those things. And trust me, it's way deeper than you think. Because even Kurt Franklin came out one time and said he was addicted to porn and that he that was a struggle for him. And mind you, usually those kind of struggle and stuff, they don't they don't die, die. Like, you may have some spells where, okay, I'm good, then you fall back. We all know, like, crack, coke addiction, and the people who claim to be of God. And I feel like we look at it co completely wrong because we say they must not have enough Jesus because they have an addiction. <laughs> How crazy is that when Jesus said uh, in chapter 5 of Matthew about the, the sick, the brokenhearted, the downtrodden, like... Blessed are them because they're fighting and they're fighting a battle every single day. We don't get to see it. We don't get to participate in it. We just see the sin. We just judge the sin, but we don't know their story and we don't know their pain. Only somebody who has experienced these things can actually sit here and say, man, I know what you're talking about. Like I told y'all, I can tell you about being poor because I've been poor all my life. I can tell you about what about self-control. Because that's one of the things I struggle with. Like I said, at one point, it was the Victoria's Secret pink. It was shoes, uh, jeans. You make it say Bibles now. And I, and I, in the name of the Lord, that was me. Like, I, I'm getting these Bibles in the name of the Lord. And like I said, you have to be careful with the journaling and the Bible because it gets addictive and it gets addictive quick. And usually those who have addicting, addictive spirits... It, it can go from one thing to another, like complete overly indulging in something like one day it sets, the next is weed. And I, I won't say that I was ever addicted to weed, but I felt like it was necessary. Like I felt like I have to do this. And I thank God because that was one of those things I'm talking about. When I got married, I went cold turkey and y'all, and you may say, wait a minute, Char, wait a minute. 
You were saved before you got married. Yes, I was. And listen to me. Let me tell you this right now. There is no such thing as a Christian smoking saint. And you may say, were you not one? And I tell you to your face and I tell you over this prompter. Listen. I did not have both feet planted in my word. I did not have both feet planted on the straight and narrow. I had one foot over here and one foot over there. And God had to deal with me accordingly. Self-control is serious, y'all. It, it has something to do with how you spend your money, where you, what you invest in. Because uh, the same person that can say, because God showed me this too, said, wait a minute. I may can't see nobody spending $300 on weave. But I'm pretty sure my Bible collection it goes beyond $300. So just because yours doesn't look like somebody else, don't make it right. And don't make it necessarily wrong either. But please understand that self-control. If you focus on that just a little bit more, then maybe some of the other, and I'm because love comes with it. You are to love. You are not to ever love. But oftentimes people won't out of people what they don't get. Y'all need to love on me while I'm sinning. Y'all need to be kind to me while I'm sinning. Y'all need to be faithful and loyal to me while I'm sinning. Be gentle with me. But wait a minute. You know this joy and this peace, right? You can't get that from man. You got to get that from God. So this self-control can actually help eliminate a lot of... Think about idolatry and witchcraft. You can control what you buy and what you invest into and what you worship. Just leave it alone. Put it down. Listen to the word of God. Hatred. You can control that. But you actually got to pray and ask God, look, help me to not be hateful. It really could be that simple. Jealousy. Lord, help me not to be jealous of no one and help others not to be jealous of me. Fits of rage. Uh-oh. We don't want to control that because we quit to justify. Lord, I, I want to feel this way because he's talking about me. And I deal with it myself. Like I said, there's a whole group of people right now that I'm stuck with for the rest of my life that don't care nothing for me. <laughs> Bless the quietness. <laughs> but I have to still, God bless you. How you doing? Hugs. How you try to have conversation? Because the love in me, I pray and hope that it comes out. Now, all situations, you ain't going to manage yourself. Some things are through tests and teaching. God's trying to teach you something. So then, you know, you have the long suffering. But this is something I definitely have to dig into more. I knew this was going to be a long video. But um, I thank God for the opportunity to talk about it because I know this is for somebody just like it was for me. But you think about that thing, whatever you got going on, whatever is the sin in your life or the one thing that you got that you can turn to somebody and say nobody's perfect. Think about what you're struggling with. And then think about when's the last time you prayed about self-control. When's the last time you ask God for self-control in any area of your life, whatever it be? It could be the obsession, the obsession with growing your hair or having thick hair, having uh, volume or long hair. Lord, help me to have self-control. Help me to focus on the main thing, Lord, and you take care of the rest. So I'm going to stop right there. Like I said, I probably have to come back to this. But if you want to continue to read, by all means, do so. And again, that was Galatians chapter 5, verse 13 through 26 and you of course as always i love you guys god bless thank you for tuning in on today you guys have a blessed day take care bye